Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us in this new Wi-Fi 6 series. My name is Mahmoud Ashur and it's an absolute pleasure to welcome anyone interested to learn more about Wi-Fi. Before we start and dig deeper into this series, I have been recently studying about the a 2 11ax protocol and I decided to put together this series of videos and share it with the Wi-Fi community. I want to also bring to your attention that everything presented in this series is something I learned via self-study. So if I inaccurately explain a certain topic, feel free to reach out and correct me if I'm wrong. As the whole idea of sharing this series is to collaborate and to learn from one another. <clears throat> so let's get started. This is our agenda. We are going to provide a quick introduction about 11AX. We will have also a comparison between 11AX or Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 5. Also, we will look at the 82.11ax transmission at the physical layer. Also, we will discuss some key enablers that contribute to enhancing or making Wi-Fi more efficient on both the Phi layer and the Mac layer. Also, we will discuss some other topics that are very important to understand uh, in order to uh, grasp the concept behind the enhancements that we have in the 82.11ax. Okay, so <clears throat> without further ado, let's get started. Let's talk a little bit about Wi-Fi history. So, Wi-Fi has been originally designed to provide basic connectivity. And since the days of 802.11b, let me grab the, the pen. Since the days of 802.11b, where we used to get up to 11 megabit per second, the 802.11a provided up to 54 and 11G up to 54. This is up to 600 megabit per second. I don't remember the actual numbers here, but let's say gig speeds, and let's say seven gigabit per second. For 11AX, the current standard promises to provide also gigabit speed. Let's say 8.5 to nine gigabit, and 11BE would support even uh, higher than that. So what is the key takeaway here? So between every move for, from one standard to another, we expected to have a jump in the nominal supported data rates. So moving from 11B to 11A, we have seen let's say a small enhancement, same case if we move to 11G, same case if we move to 11AM from all the standard, but here we have, let's say, a big difference um, between the jumps or the previous jumps, because we support up to 600 megabit. Now, Moving from A22 to 11N to 11AC, we have a decent jump uh, up to, let's say, 7 gigabit uh, per second. But now moving from 11AC to 11AX, which is our main topic, provides actually a slight, uh, let's say, enhancement on the data rate. So we don't expect more than, let's say, 20% of enhancement. Why is that? Well, this is the thing that we are going 
to uh, talk, uh, talk about a lot within this series, but I want you to understand for now that Wi-Fi 6 or the 82.11 standard, let me change the color, uh, was designed to provide high efficiency. It has nothing to deal with throughput. So in terms of naming convention, we used to call .11n as HT, which is high throughput. Moving to 11ac, we used to call it VHT, very high throughput. Now, when we move from 11ac to 11ax, we never talk about throughput. Here, it's called high efficiency wireless, HEW. So it's all about efficiency. We don't care about enhancing the throughput for the user. We care about enhancing the Wi-Fi protocol efficiencies. So researchers here at this point, they have, let's say, looked up the deficiencies within the 82.11 AC protocol and reworked them or work around them or enhanced them to make Wi-Fi more if, or, uh, efficient again. So now moving from 11AX to 11BE, here we can call it as extreme high throughput. So now after we enhance the Wi-Fi and make it more efficient, we now start again and we uh, commence talking about throughput. So the key takeaway here is that Wi-Fi 6 is all about making Wi-Fi efficient and we will see how is that throughout this series. But Wi-Fi 7 is something that is coming later. By the way, I think draft one has already been uh, released. I don't remember when. Uh, but it will uh, care about uh, having or providing high throughputs. Okay, one last thing. Uh, we have something in the middle here related to, uh, um, let's say, Wi-Fi 6. It is called Wi-Fi 6E. So this is Wi-Fi 6, but uh, it's supposed to run in the extended band, which is the 6 gigahertz. Um, the history behind this is that FCC has already approved uh, 1.2 gigahertz uh, chunk of spectrum to be used for as an, as an unlicensed band and to be used for Wi-Fi. So if this used to be running in 2.4, sorry, 2.4, this is on 5 gigahertz, this is in 2.4, this is on both, and this one only on 5 gigahertz. This one will work on 2.4, 5 gigahertz, which is both. Plus, we will also run it on a new chunk of spectrum, which is the 6 gigahertz band. Same case will also apply uh, for the 82.11b. Okay, good. Let me clear things. Now, back to our uh, topic. We said that Wi-Fi is originally designed to provide basic connectivity. Basic connectivity, okay? Now, nowadays, enterprise environments and service providers have gradually relied more and more on Wi-Fi to run their business. How is that? Let's consider an enterprise environment. Let's say a company. So for this company, uh, Wi-Fi has become the default access method to all local and 
online resources. Let's take the service provider, for example, so internet service provider and telecommunication provider. So these, uh, let's say, business vertical actually used Wi-Fi to offload. The key word here is to offload the cellular mobile devices into Wi-Fi. So they move them from 3G slash 4G or LTE or 5G into Wi-Fi. So we used to offload 3G devices into 11N. Also, same case goes for 11AC uh, with 4G networks. And as we are going to see maybe these days or in the near future, 5G is supposed to be offloaded to 11AX. Now, just for your reference, why do we offload? Or why does a service provider offload uh, from cellular to Wi-Fi? There are many reasons, but the main uh, reason I consider is that they uh, do this for the sake of decongesting the cellular spectrum. So they can move users to Wi-Fi and leave the spectrum, which is the licensed band. And licensed band means uh, they pay uh, to get these frequencies uh, uh, and move those users from a license to unlicensed, unlicensed band while they can have the same, let's say, uh, connect connectivity and experience. Okay, so um, let me clear again. Okay, so let's provide a synopsis here. So both users and applications demands have grown a lot. Also, vertical business such as service providers as well as enterprise environments have put a huge reliance on the usage of Wi-Fi to run their business. And this reliance on usage as well as the increased demands have put huge burdens on 802.11ac uh, to keep up the momentum and to continue to meet uh, users uh, requirements, application requirements, as well as business requirements. So after that, researchers have uh, found that any addition to uh, the demands in terms of users, applications, or business requirements might uh, introduce uh, 11AC to, re to reach a point where it can no longer deliver and meet those requirements. Thus, those researchers uh, thankfully brought 802.11ax into the table as a solution to rectify uh, the current situation or the future situation um, in order to keep the good things about Wi-Fi in delivering uh, uh, the business success that it used to deliver. So that is the summary about the Wi-Fi history section. Let's clear things up and let's move to the next section. Okay, so these are the factors that contribute to Wi-Fi inefficiency in general. We have already discussed on high level about the increasing demands in both users and applications. Uh, also, for the second point, the Wi-Fi deployments themselves uh, are becoming uh, higher in density. So you would expect 
nowadays to cover Wi-Fi in stadiums, auditoriums, or any other environments that could expect large number of users and devices that connect to Wi-Fi. So <clears throat> to explain more about high density, high density is uh, usually defined by, by the increasing number of devices connected to Wi-Fi. But with high density, we don't only refer to the number of devices, but we actually account for the applications running on them. So nowadays, it's normal to have 4K videos exchanged between the access point and the client. Um, also, with the uh, fast adoption um, of the cloud, um, we expect to have applications running on these devices uh, that, uh, is do that, that are doing cloud sync, uh, syncing data continuously or periodically, depending on the application usage. Uh, this cloud sync actually introduce, introduces a new, uh, let's say, directionality for the Wi-Fi traffic. So before cloud storage or cloud adoption, the majority of traffic used to be coming in the downlink direction from any resources before the access point, through the access point, downlink to the clients. But with the cloud adoption and the cloud sync, uh, we started to see decent amount of uh, traffic going on the uplink direction from the client to the access point. Okay, <clears throat> another thing to discuss which contributes to the uh, inefficiency of Wi-Fi nowadays, given the fact that it was efficient uh, procedure previously is the carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance procedure. This procedure is mainly uh, uh, used to make Wi-Fi polite. And before talking about politeness, this procedure exists since ancient time <clears throat> of, of Wi-Fi. So with politeness, uh, I refer to the following. So assume we have these four clients as total connected to this access point. So assume this client has already won the contention and got access to the channel. So it's currently transmitting. So we have one client in transmission in transmitting mood while the others are waiting for their turns. So, <clears throat> Sysma CA is efficient. It used the politeness uh, where all Wi-Fi devices uh, obey the protocol. So, this politeness is used in order to coordinate the transmit opportunities um, uh, for each station. But over time, as we are moving into dense environment and the number of clients are increasing, it has been proved to be uh, unscalable and introducing a lot of delays. To explain this, you can imagine a situation where we have tenfold the number of users uh, uh, that we explained here, so 40 users. Uh, if this user now won the contention and it's transmitting, then we have one transmitting and 39 are on the waiting list, waiting for their turn. So the more number of devices we have, the less efficient the Sysma CA procedure becomes. So we will see how 82.11ax uh, helps actually rectify um, such a deficiency. Um, the third uh, or the fourth item uh, talks about OBSS, so overlapping basic service set. It refers to a situation where we have two access points. Uh, I don't want to say they are 
close to one another, but they have coverage overlap between one another and they are running on the same channel. So this is AP1, this is AP2, they are running on channel 36, 36, and we have users associated to this access point, users associated to this access point. Let's assume this cell one and this is cell two. So if we have a client here that is currently transmitting, uh, and since they are running on the same channel, then based on the power of this transmission, assuming that all other uh, clients or any clients that is planning, uh, any client that's planning to uh, transmit next, here's this transmission, it will actually report the medium as busy. So a transmission on one cell would uh, actually deter the transmissions uh, on the other cells, uh, as well as it will also uh, delay the transmissions within the same cell. So this situation is uh, common in high dense environment and it is unscalable. We will see how 82.11ax uh, will help us rectify such a situation. And the last uh, point to talk about uh, here is related to spectrum resources allocation. When we refer to an access point, then uh, the spectrum resources assigned to the access point uh, are actually uh, comprising the um, Wi-Fi channel that the access point is assigned to. So let's say this client, the last client, has one contention and it is assigned um, to this channel to transmit uh, whatever data it has. So basically, this client will be assigned to all frequency resources exist within this channel. Regardless if this client is going to use all these resources or a part of them only. So for example, if I'm sending small frames like voice packets, for example, then I might uh, uh, succeed in transmitting them using this chunk of uh, spectrum within the channel while I have already reserved the remaining part, uh, but I'm not using that. So this is truly inefficient and Wi-Fi 6 will help us in a way as we will discuss later in this series to take advantages of uh, the, uh, let's say, reserved but unused resources and assign it to other clients so that they can uh, transmit concurrently and this would uh, increase the efficiency and the overall throughput within the cell. Okay, so I think that's it for uh, the first part. Let's stop here and see you in the second part. Thank you for watching.